So I got a message from Monica. Monica wrote, uh, I'm in the process of building a learning tool using Captivate. And to support the steps within the tool, our team has developed numerous Word documents that need to become a part of the tool. One option is to create URLs for each doc, but I'm wondering if there's a way to embed or link a Word document into Adobe Captivate. Not sure if this makes a difference, but the Word docs range from one to five pages. Also, the tool will be for external users, not internal users. So I'm dealing with a firewall, etc. I understand that PowerPoint can be embedded into Adobe Captivate. If there's a way to embed a doc, I'm also wondering what impact this has on the final size, i.e. megabytes of the project, and how this will impact the uploading of the project for a user. Thanks, Monica. Well, Monica, what I started to think about for this particular situation was if there was a way that we could put these files on the web. Now, most e-learning people like myself probably have access to a web server, but I thought even easier than that, there's actually a way, there's a website dedicated to housing Office, um, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and Excel files, and that's OneDrive. So I, I went into my OneDrive folder here and uh, using just the web browser, and I created um, a blank Excel spreadsheet and a Word document example, and a very simple PowerPoint presentation file. And I thought, well, you know, you can share this stuff and users, uh, users who don't even have Office installed on their computer can still edit these documents or at the very least view them. So let's take a look at the Word document example. I'm gonna select it and you'll notice that the toolbar at the top changes. And of course I have the option to share. So I'm gonna click on share. And here's where you can check off whether you want to allow other users to edit this file or not. So if you wanted them to simply view this document, for example, you could uncheck allow editing and create a special link for that. I'm gonna copy this link. So it's copied now, and I'm just gonna minimize my browser and return back to uh, Adobe Captivate. Now I've set this up in a responsive project. And I thought, well, there's two real ways that you can share something that is a web link. Uh, you can first of all do it in what's called a web object. So I'm gonna select my center larger fluid box here, and I'm gonna go into, um, where is it now, objects, and down to web, and this will give me the opportunity to paste in the URL for this particular web that I or web address that I've copied and we'll paste that in and of course if luck will have it we see word online right here within the fluid box now unfortunately I've already tested this and I've discovered that word online doesn't allow uh, iframes and that's essentially what a web object is uh, you're basically creating an iframe within a web page and pasting their website, if you will, within that iframe. And uh, so there'll be a little bit of an error message. Users would still be able to get through and view it depending on the device type and which browser. I'm going to leave it here, though, but I'm going to actually change some settings that will allow users to still see this document. And what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of displaying this particular item in a slide, we're going to do a new browser window. And you'll notice that a new dropdown or a new option appears called window size. Now default will be a size that's approximately the size of your e-learning course, so it will look quite natural. They'll still be able to see the, uh, on a desktop computer anyway, they'll still be able to see the uh, e-learning in the background. Uh, and then of course, they once they finished working with this document, reading it, downloading it, printing it, whatever it is that you, you need them to do, they can close that window, return to the e-learning course, click the next button and continue. Now that worked, uh, except when, of course, I tried it on an iPad. An iPad doesn't like pop-ups. So what I did for iPad users is I created a button down here. And uh, that particular button 
what we can do is we can assign an action to it to open that very same URL. So I will paste that in here as well. So this we're creating options essentially. Um, and again, because uh, this will work, however, if I go uh, select a new window, I don't want it to be in the current window because uh, that's going to essentially break the e-learning course and sever the link to your learning management system. So hope, opening up in a new window keeps the e-learning in the background running, and this should allow users to, uh, to check out this uh, Word document file. I'm going to make sure that continue playing the project is unchecked because I want it to wait until the user returns to the e-learning course uh, before proceeding with the rest of the course. So now we have two options. We have a little icon at the bottom here that when clicked will open this Word document in a new window. However, uh, the page itself will attempt to open this document uh, automatically on certain devices. Uh, just not iPads. I'm going to go ahead and put the links in for the PowerPoint and the Excel file just so you can see examples of both here. So let's take let's do that right now. So now let's preview this project and see how it looks on the PC first of all. So you can see here it opens up in Word Online in a new browser window uh, for the PC, of course. And if need be, I can always open it using the link at the bottom of the page if it doesn't open otherwise. Uh, let's go to the next slide. It should open up the Excel spreadsheet. I kind of like the size. It works well for, for my e-learning course. I can close that off and we'll go to, we'll test out the link here. Again, that opens in a new window in case the user needs to get back there. And we'll try the PowerPoint out. Fantastic, there it is. And of course, users have the ability to save this to their own OneDrive. They can download it. Uh, again, close the window. Click the link at the bottom if they wish to open it up a second time. And that's available for them that way. Let's take a look at what's going to happen on the iPad. So we'll see what the experience is there. So here's the um, beginning of the e-learning project here. We'll start that off. So there's the page. As you can see, it doesn't automatically load the document there, but I can, of course, press the, the link and it will open up in the iOS version of Microsoft Word, which is great. If I return to the, the course now and go to the next slide, and uh, I don't think I have Excel installed on my iPad, but let's try to launch that now and see what happens. It looks like it's opening up my OneDrive app. And although you don't see the grid lines, that of course is the Excel spreadsheet. And we'll return once more. So now we're on the PowerPoint page. I'll click on the link at the bottom. And once again, it opens up my OneDrive app. Probably would open a Safari window. I'm guessing if I didn't have the OneDrive app installed uh, and simply open Office Online. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.